Hi, good morning everybody. Nice to see you again. Uh, today with episode number 12, is actually the second part of episode 11, which was uh, dedicated to settling and moving uh, to Curaçao. Uh, we ended uh, the session in episode 11 a bit on a strange way maybe, but uh, it was to be continued. Otherwise, it would be too long with explanation. So I make a small transition and then we go on with the, the recordings we had uh, a few days ago. So I just explained that we stayed uh, at one place here in Santa Catarina and we began to do what we could do to earn some uh, funds. Uh, I began uh, the soccer academy and Pascal began with our fishes and creations. And uh, now we're going to go on with uh, the next plan and uh, next moves. See you later. And give us uh, the opportunity to, to go on and to carry on our plans. So we, we stayed for six months, I think, at that location. And uh, on that moment, we... Um, we intended uh, to begin a big experience and uh, we had a we created actually uh, an opportunity to get into tourism uh, because for us it was uh, at that moment the only solution or the only opportunity to get our papers and to stay here on Curaçao more than three months like tourists do um, it was actually investing in tourism and uh, promising uh, local uh, people a job, you know, like a gardener, a cleaning lady, etc. And uh, that's, that's what we did, actually. We, we found, you saw in another episode also, um, our business, La Palmeray, a better breakfast. So we did all the papers, um, a lot of papers, a lot of control uh, before... Uh, starting with the company, I think we, we needed six more months. Uh, you have everything to start up because it didn't exist here in Curaçao, a bed and breakfast. The, the idea, the concept was absolutely not known. And um, we, we had to do everything from uh, scratch, uh, that's the expression. And um, we, we had this uh, idea, so 15 years ago, and at that moment, we were the first bed and breakfast on Curaçao. So that was really an opportunity. You have to grow, you have to make your clientele, your, your customers from Europe to get them, get known. Now, 15 years uh, after that, uh, I would say that the market is a bit saturated here because everybody is, um, is renting something and there's not really a good regulation. So. Uh, if you're legal or illegal, uh, you can rent something to tourists, uh, especially to platforms like Airbnb or Booking.com, etc. So there's no, no opportunities. But uh, I would say, to, to make it short, um, Curaçao is, ne is really um, a place where you have to create the opportunities when you have uh, a, a unique product to sell or to offer. Uh, go for it. If you, you find, uh, in, in Dutch they call it uh, a hole in the market, uh, it's an opportunity. So go for it, but try to improve your product uh, regularly because uh, the way it goes on the island, on Curaçao, but also on other islands probably, is uh, actually a kind of copy-paste, you know. So when they see something uh, working, they try to do the same and Actually, if you stick at one place and you don't evolve with your own business, it's, it's going to, to starve away because they, they're going to dump the prices, they're going to um, offer some stuff uh, for half of the price, for example. And people actually go for that a lot, so that's, that's a bit uh, weird, but um, for us it was a shame. And that's, that's also a reason... Uh, why after 15 years you need some other challenges. I would say um, that that's really the, the introduction and um, um, really some, some parts you, you have to know 
maybe the the next parts will be a bit more uh, exciting for you and uh, listen about some details but um, you have to remember one thing Curacao is really something like a network like a spider web uh, because in the beginning you don't know anybody nobody knows you um, and you have to grow you have to to build up confidence uh, I would say Belgian people uh, are quite appreciated here in Curacao uh, so when you say you're from Belgium so it's it's quite uh, interesting for them they like uh, Belgian people um, on the other side don't forget you're still uh, a foreigner and except for Dutch people and uh, since two years I think for American citizen uh, there are some facilities to settle on Curacao for us it was not really uh, that easy uh, like I said every year I think for 12 years we had to renew yearly the papers and the permits and in the beginning you have to pay a kind of deposit and it was uh, nearly 1500 euro per person to get uh, to get on the island and that money they, they still have actually at, uh, at the main office and the day you leave you can claim that money but especially it is meant to to be used when you <laughs> you're a bad guy and they, they want to to send you back from where you came from and uh, that money uh, is used therefore so they don't have any cost uh, sending you back home you see so I think uh, that was uh, okay for our introduction about the subject um, about settling on Curacao uh, pros and cons uh, it's more general and in the next episode you're gonna have uh, more details and more specifications but uh, that was the first approach I hope you like uh, don't forget indeed to like share and subscribe on our uh, channel and uh, see you in the, at the next episode okay bye bye and stay safe